Thank you. The most unfair thing that ever happened to me took place on May 7th, 1977 at 3.31. I was born here, well, not exactly here, but in the Netherlands, not in, for instance, Bangladesh. I arrived in this wealthy part of the world by coincidence, with a healthy economy, a good climate, human rights, workers' rights, women's rights, democracy, and I didn't do anything to earn all of that. I simply had it handed to me. And so I don't have more right to it than anyone else. I don't deserve it more. I just as well could have ended up in an Asian village somewhere, sewing our jeans or producing our sneakers or shampoo. I happen to know a few of the people who actually do these things, and they are quite crucial for our lives. I mean, I, for one, am quite happy clothes exist at this particular moment. I've been working in sustainable fashion and lifestyle for over 15 years and have been lucky enough to travel to countries such as Thailand, Turkey, Bulgaria, to visit factories and meet with workers. I spoke, for instance, with Romana, a single mum of a five-year-old daughter in Dhaka, Bangladesh. She produces jeans for the Western market and has to work extremely long hours for an extremely low wage. We discussed love and life, and also what she would do if she ever were to earn a good salary. Her number one wish was for her daughter to go to school and to become a doctor and to break the cycle of low-income, uneducated jobs. I, of course, fully understood, but I pressed on because I really wanted to know what her dreams are, what she would choose for herself. I could sense she knew, but was hesitant to tell me. Go on, I said, it's only the two of us. She leaned forward slightly, her eyes gleaming. Earrings, she said. Earrings? I immediately felt some judgment, but quickly understood. Of course, she is exactly the same as I am. We are similar, we all want the same things. We just live in vastly different circumstances. For us, we don't think twice to instantly buy a pair of earrings we like. For her, this is her idea of freedom. The people who make our clothes really exist, and every seam connects their hands and your skin. We wear their stories around everywhere, all the time, like now. How is it possible that these people are being exploited to facilitate our lifestyle. For our jeans and earrings. Unbelievable that we allow our stuff to be produced elsewhere in a way that will be completely unacceptable here. Why is it okay for them, but not for us? And why is it even legal to make a profit by exploiting people in our planet? We feel rich when we can afford lots of cheap products, but actually, it makes us poorer. That something's cheap doesn't mean it doesn't cost much, but that someone other than you is paying the price. And we all suffer from this. Pollution, lesser quality, and a negative self-image. Because really, we are being used just as well. When I was born, I was also born into a society that commercializes our body and soul. We are all perfect. There is nothing to be ashamed of. We are okay just the way we are. We're all human. We all have a shape, we all have a color, we all have flaws. Nothing you buy can increase your self-love and self-worth. That is entirely ours. The regular fashion, accessories, beauty, gadgets, sports, diet industries beg to differ. We are not good enough. You're not beautiful enough. 
Your skin isn't glowing or smooth or the right shade. You're not skinny enough. You don't wear the right clothes. You're not on trend. You don't look like the model, which is actually impossible anyway. It's almost without exception. They are very slim, young, tall and white. The ideal we have to live up to in the lifestyle industry is ridiculously limited. In short, you don't look like you're supposed to look. Only when you buy will you belong. Much of the messaging is specifically intended to make us feel bad about ourselves, to so then offer us the solution, their products. We know it doesn't work, and yet we keep trying. And so we're not only talked into having a problem and offered a solution that doesn't work, we're also lured, sort of tricked into incessantly buying more and more, which makes it almost impossible to become truly sustainable. People are getting rich thanks to our low self-esteem, our doubts and insecurities, and the world suffers. This commercialization of our body image lies at the heart of our struggle to change our behavior. As long as you don't like yourself, it's okay, because then you remain vulnerable for the idea that you can fix this by shopping. We need to actively recognize and resist the way the industry makes us feel to both save ourselves and the planet, because the pressure on our looks not only affects our happiness, our mental well-being, but also how sustainably we can act. I try to fight this. 90% of the time, I only use lipstick, because I like the way it brightens up my face. But no blusher or primer or eyebrow pencil or, or it bag or stiletto heels. I try to accept myself the way I am. But it's hard. It's really not that easy. Luckily, I've got great examples. Alicia Keys, for instance, a real hero. A while ago, she decided to stop using makeup because she no longer wanted to feel insecure or hide behind a mask. She now feels more liberated, more powerful than ever. And of course, you can think, OK, hello, Alicia Keys, beautiful. And you'd be right. But without the products, she looks very different to the Alicia Keys you're used to. Still beautiful. And so are you. And so am I. Even if I don't always shave my armpits. Because that really just doesn't feel right to me. Those hairs, they grow there, they belong there. Why should they go? I actually quite like the look of them, if I'm honest. I find it rather sexy. And even more importantly, why should women remove them and not men? Yet, sometimes I'll put on a shirt with sleeves when I actually rather wanted to wear one without because I don't want to embarrass my partner, because I don't want to be labelled an activist, or simply because I just don't dare. And then I'm not really free, because this part of my body only needs to be erased, to be deleted, to sell hair removal products, which, by the way, are more expensive often for women than for men because of the so-called pink tax. Women are more expected to look a certain way and therefore will have to buy the products needed to achieve that. Now, of course, the way we are being used cannot be compared by the way workers suffered and suffer. But don't think you are being treated fairly. And if it made us feel good, but now everyone's unhappy, from the people who produce our stuff, to the people who purchase them, all caught in a web of as much as possible, as fast as possible, for as little as possible. Only to gain, but we lose. Fairness, freedom, inclusiveness, self-esteem. We're probably not here for the sole purpose of a six-pack, or a thigh gap, or a perfect outfit. Or to be skinny, or curvy, or fit, or white. I mean, this ever-changing ideal, historically, was aimed mostly at women, but increasingly men 
sort of feel this burden as well, as well as everyone who doesn't want to be labelled. Let's take back our beauty, our independence, and demand diversity. And the sustainable movement has a huge opportunity to take this lead. When I was compiling images from brands for my sustainable handbook, I wanted to make it as diverse as possible. That wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. I was sent quite some photo shoots with models from different backgrounds, which was great, but in terms of body size, there's still very little variety. So my own book doesn't really represent myself, because my shape really isn't in there. Now, of course, I fully understand that sustainable brands want to show that they are exactly the same as regular ones, that you don't get anything less. But here, it's actually a good thing to be different, to show how stylish all sizes, all shapes, our colours, all ages can be. And there are some great examples of that already. It's time to make a change, and the sustainable brands can direct us towards a new system, where we're all being celebrated, included instead of excluded, and where products are offered that we buy when we actually need them, and that will make us feel better. Of course, we customers can do a lot ourselves as well. Every time you buy something, you actually say to the store or to the brand, I love what you're doing. Please take my money to continue. Choose from brands who, who treat all of us, from the worker to the wearer, with respect. Because every small step, every action can have a huge effect. You can have as much impact as a drop of ink transforming the colour of an entire jug of water. We made this world, so we can change it as well. Who else? Let's try and be less tempted to always want more, different, improved. Be aware of the message and how it makes you feel. Let your voice be heard and take back your freedom. You are okay. Being able to be yourself and to not suffer from oppression, exploitation or a limiting ideal picture should apply to everyone, here or there. We're all one. This is the new green wave. Doing good, looking good and feeling great at the same time. Thank you. <laughs>